At NASA, safety is job one. Engineers go to extreme lengths to ensure safe travels for astronauts. We'll show you how they do it next on Real World. Oxygen mask will automatically drop from a compartment above your seat. Start the flow of oxygen. When you fly commercial, you know there are lots of safety measures in place. But if you go for a ride in the space shuttle, multiply that to the 10th power and you'll get an idea of how much safety goes into every space shuttle mission. NASA engineers divide shuttle safety into three areas, pre-flight, flight, and post-flight. Pre-flight safety includes planning the mission, testing shuttle components and procedures, and spacecraft design. In fact, the shuttle recently underwent some upgrades to make missions safer than ever, including a cockpit avionics upgrade. It's kind of like getting a whole new set of gauges for your car's dashboard. The cockpit avionics upgrade brings new hardware and software, providing the crew with better informational displays and warning functions. This upgrade helps the crew get data on the shuttle's performance more quickly. During flight, one of the coolest safety features is a monitoring system for the shuttle's thermal protection system. It uses the remote manipulator arm, along with an orbiter boom sensor system. The orbiter boom extends the manipulator arm and has a camera at its end. While the shuttle is orbiting, astronauts take hundreds of images of the shuttle's exterior. These images are beamed back to Earth and the Mission Evaluation Room, where engineers examine them, looking for any damage that might have occurred during the mission. Of course, while in flight, NASA Ground Control is constantly monitoring and checking every aspect of the mission and the shuttle. You get most of your data by flying. Mike Moses is Launch Integration Manager for the Space Shuttle Program, and he eats, sleeps, and breathes safety. Uh, the real art of making sure we stay safe every time is to look at that data. Safety issues are again addressed during post-flight, when NASA engineers focus on how all the systems perform during the mission. They gain a little more knowledge each time up. On the last flight, we saw a signature as we were going uphill for ascent. One of the pressures just didn't respond the way it was supposed to. It didn't cause any problems during the mission, STS-126, but after landing, engineers rolled up their sleeves to take a closer look at the issue. When we started looking at it, we found that the, the valve itself was cracked. The pressure that Mike is talking about inside the shuttle's external fuel tank is measured in Pascal units. For example, the pressure of the air all around us at sea level, called standard atmospheric pressure, is 101,325 Pascal. Pascal units measure force per unit area, such as one Newton per square meter. A Newton is a unit of force it was the release of pressure that caused the valve to crack. This is the, the inside of the valve, so there's a sleeve outside and this goes up and down. And what it's for is, the big external tank has hydrogen and oxygen in it, and we need to keep them pressurized to feed the engines at the right rate. So we kind of bootstrap, we, we siphon off a little bit of that hydrogen, burn it through the engine and make it into hot gas, and then we send it back up into the tank to pressurize it. So this valve controls the, the rate at which we keep that tank pressurized. So this little tiny lip here, it was fluttering up and down and you call it the wind basically. As the hydrogen rushed past, it made this thing flap and eventually it stressed it and broke it off. And we never expected that there would be that type of flow past this little valve. When this valve was designed now, probably 30 years ago, it was state of the art, it's exactly what it should do. Now that we have all these advanced computational fluid dynamics modeling, you can in a computer model exactly how this flow works and know the exact velocities and speeds. It's absolutely amazing. Thanks to computer modeling and math, Engineers are able to visualize how the flow of hydrogen and nitrogen caused the valve to fail. From there, they can calculate the likelihood that the component will fail again. We did a whole bunch of math to show, basically, that when this thing cracks, we know how the little stresses will propagate around and we can say that it probably won't be more than about a 90 degree piece that breaks off. And then you want to look at what that little piece does as it goes downstream. Is it going to hit a line and make a hole? Is it going to let too much hydrogen through so the tank gets overpressurized? So we boiled our way down through all those options. And basically, at the end of the day, we found that it was all acceptable. The probability of any one of those things happening was pretty small. The issue delayed the next flight, STS-119, by two weeks. But all that math certified that that mission would go off safely. Space flight's really hard, and it's really hard because it's so complicated. Everything has to play just right with each other. 
So as you can see, when it comes to safety, NASA engineers really sweat the details, doing all they can to make sure crews come back safely.